Yes! Finally caught this freaking ant queen. This special species has been on my mind for a very long time. This ant queen is very special and may be the most deadly ant queen in the entire northern hemisphere. Many don't know about her, but I will teach you how to raise parasitic ant species like this. You will follow the amazing story about how I raised this special one and also learn why she is so deadly. So please stay tuned and relax and sit back because I bet you don't want to miss this episode on the channel of Nordic Ants. I also have a um, sort of announcement in the end of this video. I'm moving to a tropical country and I need your help. Right, this episode, as said, will contain a lot of awesomeness involving especially ant queens. The ant queen, as most know, is the individual in all ant nests that lays all the eggs and is a vital member for any ant keeper trying to raise a permanent ant colony. So as an ant keeper myself, I always keep my eyes open for newly mated queens flying in summer. I was walking in the woods, a hot afternoon. It had rained yesterday and no wind was blowing. So I knew this was optimal conditions to catch queen ants in this temperated habitat. It didn't take long until I found Lassius niger queens flying all around. They are as common here in Europe that they are easy to raise. A very good beginner species. I didn't get any, but if I did, I would have placed them in a classic test tube setup and left them there for some weeks until their first nanitics closed. No need for food or care. The queen has it all in her huge fat reserves, just like a sumo. <laughs> well, this is what we call a claustral queen, because this is not how all queens found their colonies. Some are semi-claustral, which means that they need no food during colony founding process. These are rather peaceful ways of creating your own empire, even if it turns rather ugly later on. All queens are equipped with different abilities to ease the process of colony founding in their special niche, so to say, and this creates an important diversity of the ant species that is truly amazing to observe. But there is also another way. A rather primitive, but yet advanced one, that we humans also have done for centuries. Parasitism. One queen rather equipped for killing than having a decent fat reserve enters an ant colony, kills the queen, and then claims that she is the rightful queen of the colony, both enslaving all of the ants in it and slowly replacing them with her own. These queens often have thinner body structure and longer legs for extra mobility and also a bigger head with big mandibles to eventually manage to kill the host queen. Well, back to story. While I was walking I noticed a rather big ant. It was fast, very fast. It looked very similar to a normal black ant, but its size and way of running caught my attention. I kneeled down to realize that this wasn't a worker, but a queen, a jet ant queen. Oh boy, she was special. Never have I seen an ant queen so well equipped for killing queen ants as her. This species has many cool features. They are polygenous, which means that they can have multiple queen ants in one nest. They are also called citronella ants because of their smell when squishing them. I haven't tried and I won't but I could actually smell a little without squishing it. The workers also have the ability to turn wood into cartoon. This amazing ability enables them to build amazing underground cities made of cartoon. And they are of course a very beautiful ant. 
plain black and very shiny. But at last, how does their killer queens found their colonies? By parasitism, as you may have guessed. But their host species is rather controversial. It's another parasitic colony of the species Lassius umbratus. This means that this queen needs to outmaneuver another queen that has evolved to outmaneuver other queen ants. This puts this queen on the top of the list as a deadly ant queen. Truly amazing species. Well, how did you raise her, you might ask? There's a lot of ways raising a parasite ant queen. I could introduce her to workers. She gets a good head start, but the probability of the queen fighting and hurting herself is high. With this queen, I may consider the lives of the poor introduced ants, but you get the point. I could also introduce her to my Lassius Imbratus colony and let her kill my killer queen ant and take her place. This would even give her a better head start, but the mortality rate is even higher. So I decided to do as I always do, a very successful method that is based on my experience. First I made a proper test tube setup for my queen. Then I ventured out again. I searched for an umbratus nest unsuccessfully. In despair I searched on my phone for an alternative host species and found out that common black ants should do as well. I looked under my feet and saw a stone, removed it, got some cocoons and around four workers. Back home I separated the workers from the cocoons. I placed them in the fridge for them to cool down. Then I cleaned the cocoons from dirt. After Ant Consuela was done, I introduced the cocoons to the queen. This can sometimes be enough. The queen opens the cocoons and it gets taken care of by them later on. But I find that often the parasitic queens lack the skill and lets the ant in the cocoon screaming for help rot in there. I let her care for the cocoons for 24 hours. I checked and no cocoons had been opened. Some had darkened a bit, but my trust for the queen opening the cocoons had failed. And I decided to go to phase two of my method, introducing the shield workers from the fridge. Shield, these workers are less aggressive and doesn't cause a much a threat for the queen as she has the upper hand. I introduced them one by one. All of them ended up getting annihilated by the queen. I was bewildered and I didn't know what to do next. Had I introduced her to the wrong species? She seemed to care for the brood. Maybe the ants I introduced were too shield or who knows? The queen maybe was just Rambo disguised as an ant queen. As time passed, the cocoons only turned darker and darker. I thought that she only needed one worker that eventually would open all of them. But that didn't happen. But then I decided to do something rather freaky. I decided to take one of the cocoons and open it myself. Remember, this is something ants does delicately. But to my surprise I managed to get an eager new worker to see the daylight. It was very weak and its skin hadn't hardened yet. But I decided to introduce it back to the queen anyway. I expected a slaughter but to my surprise she accepted her. Amazing, truly amazing. This is a first for me and I feel so blessed to have succeeded and witnessed something amazing as this. A week went by and it had worked. The worker was opening the cocoons and to my surprise or despise, male elites were turning up. They are useless for this colony as their only purpose is to mate. 
they can't contribute in any way else for the ant nest. I will have to remove them later on. As you can see, there's also a lot of darker cocoons. It might have been too late for them. I'm very sad about this. But I guess this ignorant queen will make up for it by creating even more lives. This shows that in ant keeping, everything is possible. Obstacles may occur, but when thinking as an ant, everything is possible. Have a fantastic day. This is Nordic Ants checking out. Wait! Not done yet. I need you guys' help. As my subscribers may know, I live in the north of Europe. And I keep all the native species that I can get my hands on. I actually also kept an exotic trap jaw colony. I knew that with my knowledge and experience, I could keep these guys without causing any harm. But as it may inspire or normalize less experienced ant keepers, I decided to send the colony back to a friend that lived near where I caught the queen in Madagascar. That said, I now announce my move to Thailand! Ha! Thailand is a tropical country in Southeast Asia that is known for having interesting culture and amazing beaches, but also many incredibly cool ant species. So this is where I need your help. I have for now decided to keep three species. At first I decided to keep my dream species, the murder ant, a super polymorphic species that is native in Thailand. Second, I want you guys to decide what I should keep. I want you to comment or email any species that you want me to house, and as long as it is native in Southeast Asia, I will future it with my five favorite contestants in my next vid, and I will make you guys vote for one of them. Last, I plan to keep an unknown species that I will decide to keep when I first get there. See you next time, subscribers and followers or whatever, and have a fantastic day. Come on man, what are you doing? Check my latest video and subscribe.